If you're studying for the AccuPlacer math test, this video is for you. Relearn what you need to know for the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section. This video is on rates of change. Be sure to watch our part one and part two video on ratios and proportions. This is part of an AccuPlacer math playlist. So subscribe for more math, reading, and writing AccuPlacer videos. Be sure to check out our printed study guidebook. In this video, we're going to talk about rates of change. And you may wonder, what is a rate of change? And to sum up this paragraph that you see right here, it's how one quantity changes in relationship to another quantity. Now, very often with rates of change, we do talk about how something changes with respect to time. That does not always have to be the case, but in the examples that we're going to see here, here, and then the one that we will finish off with, yes, it does relate with how something changes with respect to time. So you had a busy work week at your part-time job where you worked a total of 40 hours before taxes. Your paycheck was 340 bucks. How much do you make per hour? This is a very basic example of a rate of change. Since this involves money and it involves work, most people know to take how much money they made. We made $340, and if we divide that by how long we worked, let's just go ahead and do that. Using a calculator here to speed this up, this hourly rate is $8.50, and you may see it written like this, per hour. You could use the word per here. You could do $8.50 over one hour. But this right here, this is our rate of change. This is our hourly rate. Now notice I'm using the word rate here instead of ratio because a rate does compare two different quantities. Here we have dollars per time, dollars per hour. That's two different quantities. Now that's a basic example. Let's look at one that's a little bit trickier. While driving on the interstate, you passed mile marker 120 at 3 p.m. and at 6.30 p.m. you passed mile marker 365. If the speed limit is 65 miles per hour on the interstate, is it guaranteed that you exceeded the speed limit during this time? Now what we're finding here is what's called an average rate of change. So we have a whole bunch of numbers here. We got mile marker 120 at 3 p.m. and then at 6.30 p.m. we pass mile marker 365. Taking into account this problem we did up here, we did some quantity divided by some time period. That is a good approach to take when you approach rates of change. But now what we wanna do is we wanna find a difference. So look right here. The rate of change for some quantity is the ratio of the quantity's difference over a specific time period to the length of that period. What does this mean? Well, notice we didn't travel 365 miles during this time period. At 3 o'clock, we passed mile marker 120. At 6.30, we passed mile marker 365. Let's find how many miles we traveled, and to do that, we're going to find the difference between these two numbers. I'm gonna put this in my numerator because this is a quantity based on miles per, and in our denominator, we'll put our time down there. Now, this is gonna look a little bit weird here, but I want to express the order in which I am subtracting things. Notice I'm taking 6.30 minus three o'clock, but notice how things match up here. At 6.30, we were at mile marker 365. I have both of these numbers written first, whereas at 3 o'clock, we we're at mile marker 120. It is important to keep the order of these things correct. So let's go ahead and find the difference between our two numbers at the top. 365 minus 120, that difference is 245, and this is miles. So we traveled a distance of 245 miles over the course of what? 3 o'clock to 6.30. How much time has passed? Well, okay, we got three o'clock. So four o'clock is one hour, five o'clock is two hours, six o'clock is three hours, and then it's at 6.30. So that's gonna be three and a half hours. And a way we can think about that is 3.5 hours. Notice we have miles per hour. Let's go ahead and divide this. And 245 divided by 3.5 is 70 miles per hour. Now, notice here with this answer, this is your average rate of change. 
Now, it is not guaranteed that you were driving exactly 70 miles per hour during that entire trip. You could have been going slower than that. You could have been going faster than that. But the only way that you're ever going to be able to travel 245 miles in three and a half hours, your average speed has to be 70 miles per hour. So notice it says now if the speed limit is 65 miles per hour on the interstate, is it guaranteed that you exceeded the speed limit during this time? Absolutely, because your average speed is greater than the speed limit. Sure, there probably were times, maybe in slower traffic, where you were going slower than the speed limit, but if your average speed is higher than the speed limit, guaranteed you exceeded the speed limit at some point in that trip. So take note what I have written right here. Since your average speed of 70 miles per hour, that's what we found out here, is greater than the speed limit of 65 miles per hour, you definitely were speeding at some point or some points during that trip, during that time interval. So what I want you to focus on here is that we have rates of change. We have dollars per hour. We have miles per hour. But now we can apply percents to this as well. And that's what we're going to look at in this last example. If the population of an endangered frog species fell from 2,250 individuals to 2,115 individuals in a year, what is the population's annual rate of increase? This is a very tricky problem. Not only are we talking about percents, but notice the population fell from this to this. And that wasn't a year. But it says, what's the population's annual rate of increase? This should throw up a red flag. It's not a typo, but since the population fell, the rate of increase is going to be a negative number. Now, a way that we can see that negative kind of come into effect here what one person would probably do is they would go ahead and subtract these two numbers, but we want to make sure everything is in the right spot. Now, this is totally fine if we take 2250 minus 2115. But let's think about this. 2250 and then the 2115. Remember, this is what it was and this is what it is. So if we think about this as being was, let's think of that as being year zero and what it is, let's think of it as being one year later. Bearing in mind the order that I've wrote these two down, 2250 is what it was, so I'm gonna put year zero there, so to speak, and then I'm gonna subtract what it is at year one. This is where the negative's gonna come into effect. You're gonna see the negative pop out. Now you don't have to do this by all means. As long as you understand that this population fail, we should be getting a negative rate here. 2250 minus 2115, that is 135. Zero minus one is negative one. In all honesty, it don't really matter as long as you understand that this rate here, negative 135, and this is frogs per year. That is exactly what happened when the population went from here to here. It decreased by 135 frogs. And now you may be thinking, all right, awesome. We have negative 135% and that should be our answer, but that is not correct. This negative 135 does not represent a percent. And no, we don't wanna just move the decimal. This negative 135 represents the number of frogs that essentially died. That is not a percent. How many were there before the 135 frogs died? 135 frogs died out of a total of 2250 because this is the number that it was before the population fell. And notice this test tip up here. To convert a quantity's rate of change to a percent, we wanna get some percent down here, Divide it by the quantity at the initial time and multiply by 100. Hey, look at this right here. Divide it by the quantity at the initial time. At time zero, there were 2,250 frogs. That is why I'm dividing by that one. And negative 135 divided by 2,250, this is negative 0 0.06. And now you can multiply by 100 or simply remember to convert a decimal to a percent. We move the decimal two places to the right. So we have a negative 6% rate of increase. The rate of increase cannot be a positive number because the population fail. Very tricky question like I mentioned right before we started working this one out. 
And there you have it, three examples of rates of change. And definitely as we went through these three examples, the difficulty level definitely ramped up towards this one. There's this common problem you run across with rates of change and ones like this where you're trying to find the percentage of increase or the percentage of decrease. We'll explore more of those in future lessons. And that's it for this video. Smart Edition will see you in the next lesson.